Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is a man of great character who's the president and of Finance Factors. He is Rob Nelson, and today we are going beyond financial services. Hey, Rob, welcome to the show. Hey, Rusty. Thanks for having me on this morning. Rob, it's, it was so great to meet you in person some months ago, and you, you, you guys are doing some amazing things. And I want to first start if you can share a bit about your background growing up. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm actually not from Hawaii originally. I, uh, I grew up in Connecticut, uh, New Haven area, and um, I consider it one of the pizza capitals of the world. Uh, so we have really amazing pizza there. If you've ever been through New Haven, I highly recommend you check it out. Um, yeah, so I grew up in Connecticut. I ended up going to a college at, at Boston College. Um, throughout my uh, young adult life, you know, I was active in sports. Uh, soccer and lacrosse were uh, my main sports. I was captain in high school of both teams uh, and really just enjoyed having um, that be a part of my life and kind of a formative experience for me and, and to my, my business life now. Um, yeah, so I uh, ended up moving to Boston, went to Boston College, and then worked uh, in Boston in, in financial services at Bank of America. And that's actually how I came across Jen, uh, Jen Lau, who's my wife. And I didn't know at the time, but uh, eventually, you know, fate would kind of bring us out west. And we, we moved to California, um, had our son there in, in San Francisco, uh, worked in technology for about six years, and then um, decided we really wanted to build family and build our careers here in Hawaii. And so we were fortunate enough to uh, move back to Hawaii, uh, well, for Jen to move back to Hawaii in uh, March of 2020 of all times. <laughs> oh, that's great to hear that, Robin. And, you know, before you became president of Finance Factors, what positions did you hold with pi uh, financial uh, Finance Factors? Yeah, so at Finance Factors, uh, I, I joined in March of 2020, and I spent about a year as a senior EVP. Um, and basically, it was I'll, I'll call it more or less a tryout. You know, it, it, I interviewed with our board of directors uh, and independent shareholders. And, um, you know, I had a graduate degree and kind of met the requirements to be, uh, you know, a good fit for uh, being becoming president. Um, but I was new to Hawaii and, and new to the company. Uh, so I spent about a year in a leadership role working with our uh our current or our former president, Steve Taria, and really helping him drive a company strategy. Uh, so it was really a great way to, for me to understand the operations and try to start setting a, a trajectory for the future in the company and really just kind of prove myself um, as a leader. And Rob, you, you mentioned a little bit earlier about your wife, Jen. Now, I want to ask you about your families. I mean, on both sides of your families, you guys have some incredible amazing leaders and you know you have your son Blake and and your new daughter Sloan uh just five months ago and I want to know about um I met Jen as well what, what's the biggest thing you admire about your wife Jen well she she's an amazing wife and uh just uh, such a spectacular mother to our two children uh so let me start off by saying that um you know I think one of the things that I really admire about her is her, uh, her ability, I'll, I'll call it team building skills and her ability just to attract different people from different backgrounds and bring them together. Uh, so the way I first met Jen, uh, I was working at Bank of America in the Boston office and there's probably about a couple thousand employees uh, in that office. It was a big office. And Jen uh, joined the company a couple of years after I joined. And she formed a uh, company softball team. And so she organized it. She was the, uh, the captain of the team. And a friend of mine uh, suggested that 
I emailed her and tried to get on the team. So I hadn't met her yet. And I uh, did that. And she probably told me that the roster was already full and there's no spots for me. Uh, but I, you know, kind of uh, stayed at it, uh, reached out to a few of my friends and they kind of convinced her to let me on the team. And I think the joke is I've been trying out ever since, but uh, you know, I, <laughs> I think, um, you know, she, just throughout our dating life and married life, you know, she is just so good at just bringing different people around us. Um, I'm not as extroverted as she is. And she just always seems to bring you know, just amazing people in our lives. Um, so we actually, throughout our 20s and early 30s, we were actively playing soccer um, in different places where we lived. And she would always be organizing our teams, uh, finding you know new players and just all of that. Uh, so I really just admire that about her. Yeah. And she has such a fantastic personality and you guys are, you guys make a, a fantastic team together, Rob. And I want to ask you, finance, finance factors has been in existence for over 70 years now. And why, why has finance factors been so successful for so long? Yeah, that's right, Rusty. This year is actually our 70th anniversary, which is an amazing milestone. And I, I hope we could do some in-person celebrating uh, in recognition of that milestone, uh, if safety will allow us to do that. Um, but you know, I, I really think just clarity of purpose is one of the keys of success for us. Uh, so when Finance Factors was founded in 1952, 70 years ago, um, really it was founded by six Chinese American families, including uh, Jen's uh, grandfather, uh, Danny B.T. Lau was one of the founders. And they found the company with the purpose of um, providing personal loans for Hawaii's working families uh, who, you know, at that time, uh, there was not, you know, credit cards weren't really a thing. And, you know, traditional lenders really weren't serving, um, you know, the working families of Hawaii. Uh, so Finance Factors was founded for that purpose. And really, our early products were, you know, personal loans for, uh, working families to buy pots and pans or to buy, you know, a refrigerator, um, you know, just uh, smaller kind of things to uh, you know, run an effective household and, and kind of build it, live the American dream. Um, you know, we've kind of, over the years, we've uh, pivoted away from personal loans. It really, today, we're a real estate lender. Uh, so we uh, make uh, home loans as well as uh, investor uh loans to help people acquire real estate in Hawaii and um, most importantly, help families own their home. Yeah, it, it, Rob, it's so impressive how, how finance factors started. And what, what is your vision to enhance finance factors for the next 70 years? Yeah, I'll kind of tie it in with your, your books. Um, you know, so, you know, we had a clarity of purpose and we still have that. And I believe um, that still applies today as ever. You know, it's a very challenging place to uh, own a home. Um, you know, so like the purpose is very clear. Uh, we have great people. Um, so we have that, you know, the people and the purpose. Uh, we need to continue to evolve our process. Um, you know, so there's, a, you know, the, the lending uh, sphere is, is very dynamic. There's a lot of, uh, you know, big traditional players in the space that are local to Hawaii, as well as um, national players. There's a lot of uh, non-traditional players that are coming in the market. Um, you, know, you see ads for, you know, big kind of national digital, you know, lending platforms. You know, you saw that in the Super Bowl last year and, and all that. Um, so there's just a lot of competition out there. And really, so from a process standpoint, we need to continue to evolve to incorporate technology, um, both from a, a customer facing experience where, you know, if, if a, you know, first time home buyer wants to just use our mortgage uh, app on their, on our, on their phone, the finance factors mortgage app, um, and they don't really want to interact with a, a loan officer in person or over the phone, we can accommodate that. Or if they want more of a kind of blended experience where they want some in-person guidance, but some digital, we can accommodate that. Um, so we need to continue to kind of evolve our 
our use of technology in our process, both on the customer facing side, as well as our ability to be as efficient as possible uh, in processing loans, uh, you know, more on the back end side of, the thing, of, of things. Um, because if you're uh, you know, a borrower or if you're a realtor referring one of your clients, uh, you know, being able to close the loan on time and, and get that uh, person into a home, get that family into a home, is so critical and we need to continue to leverage technology for us to do that as efficiently as possible. Um, so that's a really a big focus for us. Yeah, and technology is moving so quickly. So you're so right about how, how critical it is to really refine the process. And, and Rob, you, you mentioned that the, the big focus is residential home loans now. What other financial services do you guys offer? Yeah, so we, we also specialize in uh, investment uh, in real estate. So we'll do investor loans. Uh, really, in our, our, I'd say our, our niche is for um, smaller real estate investors, you know, maybe your second property or, or, or you know, you're building a, you know, a portfolio from you know, two to 10 you know, properties. Um, so we have a lot of both residential investor uh, solutions that we offer. And then we also have a commercial real estate uh, lending business as well, which can support, you know, larger, you know, apartment building projects and things like that. Yeah. And Rob, the CEO of Finance Factors, Russell Lau, is a tremendous leader. Okay? And you work so closely with him. What, what leadership qualities do you admire about Russell? Yeah, he, he, he really is a great leader. And, uh, He's also uh, the father of my wife, uh, so uh, it's good that we set good boundaries between uh, work and personal life. But yeah, you know, he. What I really admire about his leadership is he's uh, he, he always has a coach mentality. Um, he's always coaching um, in in a good way, not in an overbearing way, but like when you need that coach to give you advice or tell you what what it is you need to hear to kind of improve or kind of get get motivated he's just always ready and in that role he's just so good at that uh you know he coached jen uh in youth sports growing up and you know i just see it like he's just a coach in everything uh <laughs> both business and personal life and he really pushes us to you know just continue to get better yeah i i feel i felt so great to have met russell and, and to really talk with him and i i get that that he, you know, I can see the coach in him. He has a passion for coaching. And and Rob, what? How would you describe your leadership style? Yeah, I I think um, I like to lead from the front. Uh, definitely, I have a lot of awareness. I focus on being aware, you know, self awareness, you know, awareness of myself, but also um, very in tune with. Uh, my team and what what's going on in their lives, personal, professional, and otherwise, that um, can impact us in uh, you know achieving our goals. Um, you know, so I think that's that's really critical. And it's been a I think an added challenge for me. Uh, you know, not you know not being from Hawaii, being you know new to the company, and having having. Having happened to have moved in March of 2020, two days before the shutdown, and really kind of coming into the company uh, in a way where um, you know I can't get in a room with all my team uh, and you know and read uh, you know read the room and understand how they're perceiving me and how uh, how they're feeling about you know, different conversations that we're having. Um, so that. That's an added challenge that I still live with now uh, with our latest variant, unfortunately. Um, but it, it's been so critical as a leader just to be hyper aware uh, with any kind of uh, input you can get, whether it's through a Zoom call like this or um, you know that one time you happen to meet someone in the hallway because uh, they happen to be in the office or um, or over email even, you know, so I think having that awareness is something that I'm very focused on. And I, I think lastly, I'm just very um, data driven, I would say. Um, I, I went to grad school at MIT Sloan, um, which is a pretty data driven place. And, um, you know, I try to, I try to lead 
uh, by data. It doesn't necessarily have to be quant quantitative data. It can be other inputs as well, but I think that's critical um, to have you know, as much data as possible to make an informed decision as a leader. Yeah, and, and I think you're a perfect fit uh, because you're a great leader to really move finance factors you know, in the right direction. I mean, to continue to move them in the right direction. And Rob, tell me a bit about your uh, charity annual golf tournament. Yeah, so the Finance Factors uh, Charity Golf Tournament uh, is a tournament that we've been doing every year um, in some form for probably over 20 years. Uh, we missed, I guess, the 2020 year, but this past uh, this past fall, we were able to put the tournament back on, and it's this is a great opportunity for us to interact with customers and other. Uh, referral partners and support partners in the community. And I think most importantly, um, we're able to raise uh, funds to uh, put towards charitable causes. Um, and we were successful in that this past year, which is great. And so we made a, a great donation into the uh, uh, Department of Education for various local schools to support uh, hands-on you know, learning and sustainability um, and conservation. Yeah, you, you guys have been really helping the community through all those various um, charitable donations. I mean, I saw that you guys have, like you said, the DOE and Lao Lima. And, and why is that so important to you? Uh, like for me personally, I, I just enjoy giving back. And I, and I, I, I you know, lived a you know, very privileged, good life. And um, I think it's so critical that. Uh, you know, we pay it forward. Uh, from a company standpoint, you know, we, we kind of talked about our purpose and our focus on helping Hawaii's families. Um, and that's, that's the core into the culture of who we are as a company. Our, a lot of our shareholders today are descendants of the original founding uh, six families. And the community impact side of our business is one of the most important things to them more so over you know, financial return and other things. Um, I, so that's Rob, I totally important. agree with you on that. I, I, I mean, that's really what it's all about is to really give back and help the community at you know, where you work. And, and you guys, I also noticed that you guys also do some uh, volunteer cleanups at the beach and uh, Chinatown as well. Yeah, so we did a uh, cleanup last year at the uh, Waimanalo Beach, um, and that was uh, an amazing experience. That's me and Jen masked up there. Uh, you know, unfortunately, in that experience, you, you're kind of humbled by um, all the plastics that you find in the sand. Um, you know, but it, it's important to, to experience that and see, you know, the responsibility that we have to be good stewards for for the future of our you know, our planet. Um, and then we we did a big cleanup in in Chinatown as well. Uh, at near, you see some of our employees with uh, Mayor Rick there. Um, yeah, and, and again, it's uh, giving back to the community. And, and I think as a leader, I, I just enjoy it. Anyways, I like to get out of the office whenever I can. Um, but as a leader, it's such a great opportunity to um, have your employees kind of rally in person and to. Um, you know, accomplish something together. Uh, so I think it's a great thing for our, our employees as well. And um, we're doing good in the process. So that's a, that's a win-win. I'll take that any day. I'm sure your employees love to get out of the office as well. And, and Rob, you, I, I feel so grateful that, that you read the, my books and then you like the books and you're mentioning about the four P's earlier um, what, what are some other principles that stood out to you in the books? Yeah, um, and I was just kind of thinking about, uh, I, I was reading Beyond the Game uh, when my daughter was born, actually. So you know, I, uh, she was born, uh, it'll be five months uh, tomorrow. Uh, and so I think I was kind of emailing with you uh, while, while I was in the hospital uh, where I uh, yeah, I had some extra you know, time on my hands, you know, just kind of hanging out in the hospital with our daughters. So I, I just kind of read the book when I could. Um, you know, I, I'll just say, yeah, I, I love how the books are just 
straightforward, direct, and super practical. Uh, I don't think I've read, um, you know, a, a, a business book or a, you know, a personal growth book that's, um, you know, set in, in, in kind of the high school um, level, um, which I think is just so relatable. Uh, you know, for me, I'm more of a high school athlete. I, you know, I, I played, you know, club uh, level in college, but, you know, I wasn't, you know, a D1 athlete or you know, I wasn't a professional athlete. I didn't, you know, climb the 14 great peaks of the world. Um, but, you know, a lot of us, uh, you know, we played sports in high school or we, you know, performed in band or, you know, things like that. And, you know, it's, it just makes it more relatable, I think. Uh, so I, I really appreciated that about the books. Um, you know, definitely the uh, culture of excellence, I, I, I think, and just how the importance of the small things um, as a leader and as a teammate, um, you know, the way you conduct yourself, your attitude, and your, your mentality, um, it's just so critical because it's, it has that kind of multiplier effect. If you're, if you're off your game as a leader, you know, you're going to knock, you know, the rest of your uh, team off their game as well. Um, and, you know, as I thought, I saw that kind of carry throughout the books and um, it made me more aware of that in my approach to my day. Um, so I've, I've really, you know, appreciated um, you giving me a couple of copies and I, I, I keep the books with me handy. No, I, I love that, Rob. And, and, you know, it's, you're so right. It's all about that culture of excellence. And you guys have a culture of excellence with your employees. And I, I know some of your coworkers as well, and they absolutely love working with finance factors. I mean, they absolutely love it. Now, I also want to ask you, Rob, about what are your thoughts about taking calculated risks? Yeah, I think my, my wife's probably laughing at me right now because I she always makes fun of me because I'm more risk adverse in some ways than her. But uh, no, I I think taking risk is is critical. I mean, we're we're a lender, so we're in the business of taking risk in some way. Um, and and for me, it's really you know what I see a lot from a career standpoint is taking advantage of opportunity. Um, you know. You, if, if an opportunity, if a door opens for you, um, you know, for a promotion or maybe a lateral move, even, even if it's uh, scary or, you know, you're not 100%, you know, role ready, I, if you are aspiring to be a leader, like you have to kind of take those opportunities and take a risk and, and grow into the role. Um, so I, I think from a professional um, role standpoint, taking risks in that way is critical. Um, you know, I, I have my um, CFA and I have some background in, in, in investing. And I think it's important to kind of compartmentalize risks where you can and kind of like, you know, of course you want to have like a stable base and you don't want to like mess with that. But, um, you know, in business, you do need to take, uh, you don't want to put all your eggs into like a risky and, uh, decision or investment, but um, you do need to set aside some kind of compartment to take risk and to explore um, either new business models, new products, um, you name it, but you just have to kind of continually be exploring and learning from that. Uh, and so really, I think setting a culture where, uh, you know, failure or, you know, a mistake is, is okay. And you learn from that and you adapt and that makes you better for the next decision. Um, so that's, that's something kind of core to how I um, try to lead. Yeah, no, I, I like those insights, Rob. And I want to ask you, I, I saw that Joy Barua is the new president and COO of finance insurance. And can you tell me about uh, finance insurance and how it's connected to finance factors? Sure. Yeah. So finance insurance is another affiliate of the uh, uh, finance factors family of companies. Uh, so finance insurance is an independent insurance agency that's been serving Hawaii for over 50 years now. Um, and we offer both uh, personal lines as well as commercial lines insurance. Um, and so joy uh, 
we're very excited and kind of fortunate to have him uh, join as the new president of, of the finance insurance operation. And, um, you know, I think a great thing about having an independent insurance agency is that we offer, um, you know, I think it's over 70 different carriers uh, of insurance. So we, we have, you know, we're not, we're not captive to one per particular carrier. Uh, so we offer you know, the best option for our particular client's needs. Um, and that's something that we take a lot of pride in. Yeah, and I, I think Joy is such a great choice to be the leader of finance insurance as well. And, and Rob, what, what are some of the challenges you're faced with in your business at the moment? Yeah, I, I think uh, continuing to build succession and continuity. Um, you know, it's, you read about it in the trade press here locally as well as nationally, that it's, it's just difficult to um, the staff up and have uh, all the employees that you want on the bus at any given time. Um, so I think that's, that's been a tremendous uh, challenge, uh, I think, for all business organizations. And, you know, every day I kind of just going about my day, I'm in encountering the impacts of having kind of labor shortages. Um, yeah, so I think that's a big challenge. And then really uh, for us, I, I think it's adapting our culture to the pandemic slash post-pandemic life, I guess, where um, you know, we're not going to be 100% in the office and we're not going to um, meet with all our clients uh, in person uh, when we're closing a transaction on, on a home. Uh, and so we have to adapt to that uh, in a way that's, I mean, it's new, um, you know, as these different variants are surging throughout our community, um, you know, the, the, you know, keeping people safe, keeping our employees safe and customers safe is such a high priority. And we take that so seriously. Um, but it, you know, it demands a lot of your time and attention to, to kind of navigate that. So I think those are um, you know, big challenges that we're seeing right now. Yeah, and you're doing a great job, you know, adjusting and adapting to those challenges. And and I want to ask you, Rob, what's a what's a very valuable lesson that you learned in life so far? Yeah, so you might have saw it in the the picture of like my side of the family, but my uh, my older brother is in a wheelchair, so he's both uh, uh, physically and mentally disabled. Um, so I've I've learned from him just to, you know, life's not always fair, um, but you got to make the most of what you're given and and. Uh, you can live a good life that way. Uh, so he, he's always been an inspiration to me. He's a, he's four years older than I am. Uh, so he's my big brother. And um, yeah, when you go around uh, Connecticut with him, he's kind of like a celebrity. Like at, he's way more popular than I am. Like, you know, we'll go, we'll take him out to dinner somewhere and people will come up to him. Uh, and he's, he was, he works a variety of jobs. Uh, so like they, they see him through uh, his jobs and things like that. And those come up and say, hi, hi, Brian. And they just, you know, he, he just does so well, um, despite his, you know, his, dis his disability. Uh, so that's, that's something that I've just kind of learned growing up with him is that life's not fair, but you have to make the most of the opportunities you're given and you'll live a good life. Rob, thank you for sharing those insights uh, on the show today. I mean, you you are doing such a great job for finance factors and the future is definitely bright. And I want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today. Thank you so much, Rusty. And thank you so much for all your, your leadership guidance through your books and through meeting with you. Thanks, Rob. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com, and my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Rob and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.